In this video, I'm going to talk about um, uh, one strategy for dealing with um, heteroscedastic uh, error variances in the context of OLS regression. Uh, least squares regression assumes that um, that your prediction errors or your, your residuals uh, exhibit homoscedasticity, meaning that they exhibit constant variance across uh, levels of your predictor variables. Uh, when that assumption is violated, that can lead to um, um, biases in the standard errors and in your and ultimately uh, have a negative impact on your uh, decisions concerning uh, your um, population parameters. Um, in other words, you, it can lead to uh, increases in type 1 or type 2 error rates uh, as they pertain to the inferences that you draw with respect to your uh, regression coefficients. So um, at any rate, uh, so this particular uh, discussion is based uh, on an article that was published in 2007 by Andrew Hayes and Lee Kai. Uh, it's called Using Heteroscedasticity Consistent Standard Error Estimators in OLS Regression. So um, basically um, uh, what I want to show you is uh, a module uh, that you can es essentially install into SPSS um, um, that uh, Andrew Hayes created and then show you a little bit about how to run it and to um, to generate um, uh, corrected standard errors uh, or standard errors that have been corrected for um, heteroscedasticity. So the first step actually go, involves going to Andrew Hayes's website. So um, his website here is, um, uh, is listed above right here. Uh, so if you go to this particular website and scroll down, he's got a lot of great utilities. Um, and um, if you keep scrolling down, you'll see uh, HR, uh, HCREG, or that's basically the heteroscedasticity consistent uh, regression. So uh, in, in fact, this is the uh, research uh, article uh, title and everything, as well as it looks like a PDF of the article. So um, you actually have a couple of options here. You can do download a macro directly, or you can download this little custom dialog box option uh, right here. So and when you click on it, um, you know, it will download. And when you click on this little button uh, where the download occurs, you see it says, "Would you like to? Uh, what would you like to do with this uh, custom dialog file?" And obviously, I'm going to click on install. Now, the fact of the matter is, my the, the I'd already installed it uh, previously, so that's why it says it's already been installed. Do you want to overwrite the previous version? I'm going to just click on cancel. But obviously, um, after you install it. Uh, you can locate this custom dialog box if you go to analyze regression and then underneath where it says linear you'll see linear HCSE so that is uh, the, 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 the module that, um, that you can click on. So uh, for this particular data set right here I've got uh, two predictor variables uh, self FC and ability as predictors of achievement. Uh, I've already um, assessed uh, the data for um, uh, heteroscedastic errors. It appears that there is uh, a, a problem with that. So I want to uh, carry out um, my regression analysis using robust standard errors. So um, what I'll do really quickly, I'm going to first I'm going to run just the least squares regression uh, just to kind of uh, for a point of comparison. So I'm going to put my two predictors in here uh, as my independence achievement as my dependent click on OK and so now you can see uh, there's my R square value it's obviously very high uh, and statistically significant and then we have each of my predictor variables uh, this is fictional data so the R square being that high is not um, um, a, a miracle that has taken place it's it's basically been generated um, with that in mind so at any rate at this point what I'm going to do is click on analyze and go to regression and then to linear HCSE um, and so here for the dependent bo uh, in the dependent variable box I'm going to put my dependent variable obviously in the predictor uh, box I'm going to put uh, my two predictors um, 
So you'll notice where it says HC method uh, down here. So there are actually several of them that were uh, available. I think in their article they actually recommended either the HC3 or the HC4 method. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually going to stick with HC3 and, uh, and then uh, click on OK. And so now you can see that we end up with our, um, our um, regression results. You can see here is the R-square value, it's 0.7281, the F value of 21.518, uh, as well as, um, you know, here are our regression coefficients and the standard errors and t-tests, and then the p-values uh, that are printed out down here. So just as, as sort of a point of comparison uh, between the two, you'll notice that in terms of the R-square value, it's the same as what we had previously. Uh, you'll notice that the unstandardized regression coefficients from the least squares uh, also shows up uh, down here. Uh, so the intercept and the regression coefficients, uh, those are all the same as what we had with the least squares results. The differences uh, come into play where, with respect to the F test. So there's the F value from the least squares regression and the F value from the, um, um, from, uh, the HC3 procedure. Uh, and then also you can see that the standard errors uh, look different as well. So here are the standard errors from the OLS um, procedure or least squares regression. And then these are the standard errors uh, using the HC3 uh, approach. So uh, you can see that, um, you know, in this particular case, the standard error for the intercept is actually a little bit larger than it was previously. Uh, the the uh, standard error for uh, the first regression coefficient was roughly about roughly the same, and you can see the the um, standard error for the uh, second regression uh, predictor uh, was uh, a little bit larger. So you can see that the the t values are a little bit different as well as well as um, the p values that are printed out. So at any rate, those are, reflect the adjustments that have been made. So um, in terms of the uh, regression uh, results, uh, you know, largely uh, the um, the HC3 procedure really didn't do a whole lot in terms of uh, altering my conclusions. In the original model, it, you know, I would have concluded or concluded that uh, ability and self-efficacy were statistically significant predictors of uh, achievement. There's my R-square value, so there's my F-test. Uh, addressing the significance of the R-square value. Uh, both of those predictors were statistically significant in uh, the regression model. And when I looked at the um, uh, results from following the HC3 procedure, uh, it actually turned out that uh, the R-square value was still deemed statistically significant. Um, and when it came to the individual regression uh, coefficients, the unstandardized coefficients we see here, um, you know, adopting say a 0.05 level, both of these would still be statistically significant. Uh, just kind of FYI, you know, so keep in mind that, um, you know, when you're reporting, um, you know, the, uh, the coefficients will, like I said, they'll be the same as what we had uh, previously in our, uh, uh, our least squares regression, uh, uh, which would have assumed homoscedasticity. Um, however, the standard errors and the T values obviously are differing. Uh, if you want to report on the standardized uh, coefficients uh, in the context of these results, all you have to do is consult back up to the original um, uh, least squares uh, results for the standard standardized coefficients or the beta coefficients. Um, you know the heteroscedasticity uh, doesn't have um, a biasing effect when it comes to the actual um, uh, point estimates for the unstandardized and standardized coefficients. Um, like I said, the big biasing effect uh, tends to be concerning the standard errors. So at any rate, uh, like I said, there are various uh, um, options available to you um, if you want to adopt a different type of method. There's the Huber-White, there's HC4. That was another uh, method that was um, recommended uh, in the Hayes and Kai um, um, article. But um, at any rate, this was just sort of a short introduction to uh, this procedure and kind of to, to, to provide an alternative to OLS regression if you happen to have uh, heteroscedastic um, error variances.